Oh, that's look, that's centered right there. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm squeezing my face in the shot right here. This video is for Melanie. She gave me this machine. Uh, she's one of my Patreon supporters, been there uh, supporting the channel for a very long time. And she also happens to live down the street and also happens to do sewing machine repair in my area. So she had this machine. She just wanted me to take a look at it, see if I can help figure out a problem with uh, just one specific thing. This is the left and right needle movement. And uh, she just wanted to see if I could figure it out and make a little video about it and show all of you as well. Let's get started. So normally when I go through my process of looking at a machine, I do my full cleaning first, which helps me to get acquainted with the machine. In this case, I'm not doing that because uh, we're just kind of looking at one thing. And this is, this is not my normal thing, but you know what? We're gonna learn together on this one because if I have worked on one of these, it's been a little while. So what you, you can see here is I'm on the widest stitch width. And then if you look down here, you'll see that the needle is way over here on the edge and it's hitting a presser foot. So that's not where it's supposed to be. If I move my lever all the way over to the left for the straight stitch, we are not in the center. And if you look over here, we should be in the center. So if I move it in a position to the left, we are again touching that same spot. And then if we move it over to the right, we're not all the way to the right. So we need to figure out how to adjust whatever piece it is up here um, that's moving the top of this needle bar. Is that open? Oh, okay, and we'll get to that. But uh, whatever moves the needle bar left and right, and usually you have a linkage that goes along here to some cam or something, and somewhere in there should be an adjustment that we need to find. So Melanie sent me a picture showing me that she was adjusting this right here which makes sense because this is where your linkage connects to the needle bar. And that's probably the first thing that I would also go for because it's easy to accept access over here. And there is a slide where you can adjust it left to right. So we're going to keep looking. Uh, this, I'm going to try to adjust it here and see if I can make any difference. but we are also going to keep looking. So right now I'm gonna pull out the needle so I can actually get this to go through rotation. And what you're seeing right here is that this is the actual cam that there's a follower right here that moves back and forth, causing that needle to move left and right. So this is our cam that's causing our zigzag stitch and the follower is right over here. Let's see if I can get, get you in there and show you. So what you can see is, if you look at this piece right here, watch that as I turn the hand wheel. So it's moving out, and as it's moving out, our needle is moving and then it comes back down and now our needle has moved to the other side. Okay, so that piece, we our problem is gonna be between this piece and then the needle down here. Next thing I'd like to do is take off this cam Take a look. So one thing that's bugging me about this machine is that the, the timing of the needle left to right movement is 180 degrees out. So it's as far out as it can be. What, what that means is when the needle is going into the fabric, that's when it's moving left to right. You don't want that to happen because it's going to it can't do that. It's going to try and pull that fabric left and right. And um, that causes a huge problem. What you want the needle to do is to, for your zigzag stitch, you want it to come up. And as it's coming up, then it moves over and then hits the top 
somewhere in the middle and then it comes down and goes through the fabric. This is like a parabolic arc. And right now we're having one where it's, it's the opposite. So it's going down into the fabric, going around and coming out. To me, it's just annoying to, to see that. So I'm going to see if I can fix or work on that. I found one problem, one part of our problem. And this is something that affects a lot of these older singers. And as it turns out, it's kind of funny. I actually recently got some parts to, to see if I could fix this problem because it is a problem with a lot of these. And what it is, is when you take the machine apart and clean it, uh, you'll find some plastic pieces down up here and looks like a washer or something, little, little bits and pieces of a washer that you'll find in this machine. And um, I believe this is already clean, so uh, she may have already cleaned that out. But you'll find these pieces and you'll be, you'll wonder where it came from, but the machine seems to work okay. So um, you may put it back without working with that. But then you'll notice that all of your adjustments are off and you have to adjust a whole bunch of stuff with that machine. And don't ask me what uh, Singer model numbers are affected by. I really, I'm not sure. I think it's probably the 600 series and then this one's a 533, so the 500 series. Um, let's take a look at some parts that I recently got. So the problem is right here. There's usually a washer that's right in there and it's a plastic washer and it's not very thick, but it's thick enough to make a difference. And then if you watch, I can move this shaft. You see that? You see that right in there? I can move this shaft by hand. And notice this is also moving. The cam is also moving a little bit. And then also as I'm doing that, the needle is moving to the right, which is where the needle needs to be. Well in the right direction of where the needle needs to be. So a lot of these old Singer machines are missing that washer. So what I was saying was there's some enterprising people out there that have purchased these and then they put a few cuts into it so that this will go into or around the shaft and stay in place. The reason that they do this is because the amount of labor that it would take to remove this entire shaft and then put a new washer in there is pretty huge. But if you have this, it's about three quarters of the way around, it'll snap in there and stay in place on that shaft. And I could probably even do with cutting out a little bit less on there. So what I will do in order to get this in is I'm going to loosen up this piece right here. Now, so uh, what I was saying before was, and what I've done in the past as well, is that I have taken this and moved it over because that washer is missing that I didn't understand. And it causes our uh, needle to go back into alignment and everything, but the problem arises when you have a buttonholer and this machine doesn't have a buttonholer stitch, but so I learned this from someone named Mark Sumter and he's he's on the uh, sewing machine resource Facebook group and so that washer in there gives you the correct dimensions such that you'll have the right needle position and you know the other dimensions that go off whenever you move this entire shaft. So we are going to move this back, put in, and I'm probably going to cut another one. That'll be less likely, less likely to fall off. Okay. 
Now we're closer being adjusted properly. So if I move this, I'm not getting much movement out of that. Closer than we were, we're still off a little bit. Okay, so I moved it a little too far one way, then a little too far the other way. And this is kind of difficult to, it seems like I need to be on zigzag in order to get access to the the bolt and then use my little tiny, uh, this is a 930 uh, seconds, in order to loosen it and then move it a little bit. So it's kind of trial and error. Oh, that's look, that's centered right there. Okay. All right. So as you can see, so that's centered right there. The center of um, our presser foot has a little notch in it. And that's going right down the center of that notch. And then now let's see how our zigzag looks. So zigzag's off. So we need to adjust something else. Yep. Okay. So we got our needle left to right. Correct. The zigzag is off. Okay. We may have determined that there's a cam in here. That needs to be adjusted. Okay. I'm just right now, all I'm doing is I'm adjusting it. Trying to make sure that the hand wheel is easy to turn. Cause this also kind of adjusts how the proximity to those two gears. So I'm making sure that, you know, the oval that the needle goes through, I'm making sure that the oval uh, on my left and right sides of my, um, my zigzag stitch, that it's going into the same spot on that oval on the left as it is on the right. So the same clearance from side to side so that it's centered the way it should be. And it's still annoying that our timing is 180 degrees off, but we'll get there eventually. And then I still want to see that this is in the center. And then I also want to take off the presser foot. Just make sure my presser foot, because if your presser foot's not lined up properly, then ever, all my adjustments have been for naught. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing is the helical gear on top, I'm loosening that so that it can turn. Oh, 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 okay, it was loose. All right. So now, yeah, it's not doing anything. Um, I want to be able to see this. So this is coming off again. Okay, I want it in the center of that when it's supposed to be on, coming down on the right hand side. So I want this to be as far over as it can be when the needle should be all the way over to the right. So what I'm doing is placing my needle on the downstroke of the right hand side so that uh, this should be approximate to the correct timing. And then I can do small movements after that. Okay, if you can see that, that helical cam gear. Um, as I was moving this without the screws tightened, it was walking its way to one side or the other. So it needs to be centered on the gear that, that's attached to this. So now my screw is up and now I want to hold that in place while I get, get my nail, my nail. Well, I get my needle and go to where it's coming down. A lot of this stuff is difficult. It's really difficult to catch on camera while I'm figuring it out while I'm doing it. So right now I'm going to tighten down 
this helical cam and see how close we are to the right timing. Oh, that needle. Okay, I only tightened one of the screws. I know there's two. Okay, we are not correct. Okay, just make sure this one doesn't make a difference. It doesn't. Okay, uh, I'm on the wrong side of the little cam lobe, so I need to move it just a fraction to get it to the correct side. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna put it all back together and see how it runs because it's confusing me. And I think it's because I don't have all the cams in right now. So I'm gonna tighten everything up. I'm gonna put all this stuff back together. Let's, uh, let's see what we've got. So what we did was we first put a washer right in here in order to get the right clearance for that top shaft. So now the top shaft doesn't move left and right. So that's, a, that's one thing that makes, uh, makes us able to adjust this machine such that the needle is not going to just move when it's not supposed to. And then on the cam stack, we were 180 degrees out. So we had to adjust the timing so that the needle would switch sides when it was up in the up out of the fabric. Now, the one thing with this machine that I'm noticing is that the needle, so when it's coming up, it wants to move in as it's coming up and then it comes down straight, but on both sides, it wants to come in. So adjusting timing isn't going to change that because it's going to, if I adjust timing to make this side so that it comes out of the fabric and then moves over, what I'm going to have is it's going to come down here and be too early. Um, I, when it when it comes back out, then it's 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 hard to say. You adjust one side, and you're adjusting both sides, so they're both off. Right now they're both even, and I don't think I'm going to adjust that anymore. But the good thing is that when it comes up and tries to move this way and can't because of the fabric, it's okay because you've got springs in here. And I think it, it, this machine might be designed to work that way because your needle has got springs to keep it from, uh, keep the fabric, will keep the needle in the right place until it comes out of the fabric. So now let's put it back together. And I don't know if this one will make a stitch the timing's a little bit off, but um, she didn't want me to mess with anything else. But I want to see if it will make a stitch. That is not bad. So I will let her know she can come pick up the machine and finish checking things like timing and all the other things you need to check in this and doing a full cleaning and all that. And thank you for watching. So today we found out that uh, out of between timing, tensions and troubles, this one was, I would call this one timing because we were timed incorrectly. Uh, our needle position was off, so that was kind of in the troubles category with the needle position being to where it would hit the needle plate and your presser foot. So we have troubles on this one and we had timing issues. And then uh, Melanie's gonna work on a little bit more. She'll probably find some tension issues and some other timing issues and some other adjustment issues but hopefully we got this machine up and running. Uh, these washers, I got these from, I'm pretty sure it's McMaster car. There's a ton of these, they're nylon washers and they're a good replacement for what's not there anymore. And a lot of these machines have that washer because I don't think it was nylon. I think it was made out of some other material that just, it just it's brittle, falls apart 
and becomes useless. So you buy one of these, you give it a little, about a, cut out about a quarter of it, maybe a little bit less, and you can slide it in there without having to remove the entire uh, upper uh, shaft assembly. This, if you've ever done that, it is not fun, and all you have to adjust every possible thing inside this machine when you do that. And uh, undoubtedly, when you go into a machine and do all those adjustments, something is not right when you're done, and you get to chase down gremlins for a few hours on one machine. So um, that's what we have. We got a good stitch out of this one. Thanks for watching.